Hey, how's everybody doing? It's Paul from Magpie 24 7. Back again with another view from the van. Harder graft. Newcastle will be also harder graft when they take on Manchester City at the Etihad uh, in this next installment of Premier League action. Uh, talk about difficult fixtures Liverpool and then Manchester City. Uh, goodness me. Liverpool, we didn't. Um, discredit ourselves uh, you know teams have taken a far worse hiding off Liverpool than what we did we stayed in the game we stayed competitive uh, we had the ball in the back of the net and if circumstances had worked uh, differently who knows we could have stuck a point out of it but uh, look we're looking for a step up in terms of performance in and in terms of a result no doubt about it um, you know <laughs> We're looking for more of that sort of Chelsea performance, aren't we, this weekend? With a little bit of luck and we've not been fucked over by a referee, that would be lovely. Because again, uh, Andre Mariner against Liverpool, absolutely fucking shocking. We were shafted, weren't we, when we went down to Stamford Bridge. We are close, we are so close. We are a fucking ant knob away from getting a result against one of these greedy six uh, clubs. We've just been unlucky and like I said things have gone against us referee decisions once more seem to rear their ugly head and that's something that needs looking at over the summer um, I've just been reading a, a thing actually on a side note uh, Clattenburg coming out on about refereeing and uh, players time wasting and stuff like that I thought, yeah that's that's fine that's fair enough highlight the time wasting uh, Jordan Pickford, Pickford with his little fucking wee arms in the uh, Merseyside uh, you know derby and stuff um, just taking the piss with regards to wasting time but look there's, to me there's still bigger issues in the game to fix first of all being the standard of referees fucking hell Mr Magoo can see things that these bastards can't see um, so yeah before referees start coming out and talking about other things that are wrong in the game they need to look at them bastard cells full time professionals and I'm telling you that the referee when it was uh, semi-professional back in the day was fucking well better. Uriah Rennie looks like fucking uh, a world beater compared to some of the absolute fucking charlatans who are refereeing games at the moment. Biased little bastards. Um, and it's not just that, but the, the people who are sending the referee, sending people who have connections to Liverpool to oversee a, a, a Liverpool game. It's just fucking madness. But back to this weekend's game. Let's hope we get a decent refereeing performance. So we don't have to talk about the referee the best referees are the ones that you don't have to speak about you don't have to talk about they just get along and manage the game and they don't try to be the absolute fucking superstar of the game but that's enough about them bunch of fucking bastards and that's what they are um, but Newcastle we do we travel down um, to Manchester and we're going to be looking for a similar performance that we put up against the likes of Chelsea like I said with a touch a rub of the green uh, and with some decent refereeing decisions for a change we've got to and I said this after the Liverpool game we've got to make more of our opportunities so when we're getting free kicks when we're getting corners we don't want to be hitting the first man we don't want to be overshooting it we need to be literally inch perfect on the head of say Dan Byrne and causing shit for the opposition we have to take the chances when they present themselves uh, so when a crossing opportunity comes I don't want to see players uh, particularly cutting back in and doing fancy tricks and flicks and stuff like that get the ball in the in the box get bodies in the box and then let's see what can happen you've got to put these teams under pressure at some uh, time or the other to score the goals to get our noses in front because with the defence uh, and the setup of the rest of the team uh, being miserly and mean if you can get your noses in front you just do not know where we'll be able to uh, pick up a point or whatever and really throw a shit grenade into this fucking uh, love fest title running people Oh my word, it's absolute pure filth, uh, you, you know, just with the superlatives for Manchester City and Liverpool. I'm sick of the niceties about it all. It's about time it got spiced up, and what better to spice it up than the Newcastle going down there, the Etihad Stadium, and like I say, just fucking lobbing in um, a shit grenade into, in, into it, and just to spice it up, uh, and to give us uh, something towards, you know, the, the, the running as football fans, to be able to watch with a little bit more interest because um, you know the relegation thing the, the last place for the relegation zone that is quite interesting I'm glad Newcastle aren't involved in any of that crap mind you uh, but the title parade like I say it's just it's just too nice you know back in the day even like um, 
Newcastle, Manchester United, Manchester United and Arsenal. There was always a little bit of spice there, a little bit of rubbing each other up the, the wrong way, a little bit of psychological mind game. But you get none of that now, it's all uh, sanitised down and stuff. But look, in future years, you just don't know, Newcastle could be involved in the title picture. As actual contenders, you don't know. Um, but for the time being, we could have a massive say on the course of this season's Premier League by going down there and doing something. Now, Manchester City, are they going to be the wounded uh, beasts who are coming out fighting? Are they going to be feeling sorry for themselves after what happened in Madrid? Uh, it's difficult to be able to tell, but look, they've got a fantastic... Um, team, a fantastic squad. I've got to make out to say that I, I don't think the squad is as good as what Liverpool's is. Um, I think Liverpool just shared it, but Manchester uh, City have a fantastic first 11. They can score goals from all over the place. They play a really good brand of football, but like I said, I want Newcastle to get in there and be aggressive and be committed. Um, you know, really, really concentrate, which they'll have to do for 90 minutes. If Newcastle can play at our very, very top and our best, as we've seen them under Eddie Howe, um, Manchester City have a little bit of a feeling sorry for themselves, a little bit tight in the legs or whatever, they, they're a little bit below the normal selves. The Newcastle are capable of getting something this season. Um, and I definitely think that we're capable of getting a point. It's been a long while since we've gone down there and had a taste of victory. The League Cup game comes uh, to mind instantly. We weren't fancy then, and we, we, we played a, a rotated team. Nobody thought we'd win that one, and we did. So you've got to go down there with belief and heart. Again, a, a, a sold out full allocation for Newcastle United fans, uh, as per standard. And they will give everything, they will support the lads, they will uh, shout and scream and sing and dance and try and motivate the lads to get over the you know the finishing line because again i've said on previous videos i'll say it again worth reiterating uh, you can people have called this a free hit it's not a free hit not when there is a rebuilding job going on not when there is massive pressure under each and every player in the squad to keep their place for next season because the the finance the money is there to be able to go out and replace any fucker in the squad so you've got to put the graft in you've got to show Eddie how you've got the perfect platform you've got the perfect opportunity to be able to show the men who matter that you deserve a place in this squad next season you want to be part of a new Newcastle United you want to be part of a successful Newcastle United and you're going to show that through your, through your performances for the end of this season to say look you don't have to go on and, and sign um, whoever I can already do a job, we can uh, improve together, I can improve, we can get better and we can get Newcastle United pushed up this fucking league table so that we're not constantly fighting relegation, staring over our shoulders, praying for fucking Burnley or Everton or Leeds just to fuck up so we can uh, stay out of trouble. It, it, it's, it's going to be different in the future and it's the players who buy into that but every one of the current squad has the perfect platform they have the audition that other players do not have. So it is up to them. Paul Dummett has obviously signed up for another uh, year, so that's a good positive against squad option. You've got to remember that you can't just rip up everything and just replace it overnight. It has to be a gradual process. Evolution rather than um, revolution. So I think that deal makes sense. I do think that there will be defensive changes over the course of the summer. Um, I think Fernandez could be in trouble with regards to his future at Newcastle. Jamal Lascelles, I don't think, is a certainty for next season. Um, I think he needs first-team football and he needs guaranteed starts. I don't know where he'll get that at Newcastle. And I don't know whether he needs a fresh start. I, I like Jamal Lascelles. I think he's been a great captain, a great player for the club. But I don't know whether he needs a fresh start. Um, I don't know whether he's going to be happy with the position in the squad that he will be in. So those conversations will be happening, will be taking place. But no doubt, if he starts this weekend, as I imagine he would do with Fabian Shea, he hasn't trained all week. Uh, so I'm expecting Jamal Lascelles to be given an opportunity. Uh, he will put in the performances, no doubt about it. And then there'll be conversations, I believe, over the summer. That's just my personal um, 
thought and hunch on the situation that Jamal ourselves will see. We'll see how it goes. But the, there'll be umpteen players who has a question mark over them. What we're doing to uh, keep sell what we think uh, very very shortly up on my Pack Twenty Four Seven YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you can do. Uh, it really does help us. There's no financial thing in it at, at, at all. Um, it's just a reward <laughs> for us, really. Um, that it's spreading the gospel. It comes up in more search engines and stuff like that when people, and the more and more people who subscribe to the channel. So it spreads the word, gets more people watching the video. So uh, that's fantastic. Everything else is doing so, so well for Magpie 24-7. Really just trying to push the, the YouTube uh, side of it as well. So yeah, um, back to matters this weekend. Uh, Eddie Howe obviously had his press conference uh, yesterday. I uh, spoke about Alan St. Maximin again being misquoted this is normally what happened you do a longer interview when somebody snips down at a certain section out of context and uh, yeah it looks worse than what it possibly is so that has been dealt with if he's spoken to St Maximum told him about with regards to interviews and, and that sort of thing um, that has been sorted out with the rest of the squad they've spoken about it it's done it's dealt with that is fine and dandy um, I've seen a split on St Maximum recently but look on his day, he's such a, um, a talisman for us. He's a match winner for us. And let's not forget, he carried us on his fucking shoulders under the Bruce era. Um, and players who can win games. And I put the stats up on the page yesterday, looking at some of our other players in a similar mold, your Ginolas and your Roberts of the world. Um, he's there or thereabouts with regards to, to stats and assists created and goals scored and all of that. So, look, I, I would just say personally, we get behind every single player. Um, and I think uh, St. Maxim is one of those, those players that once he feels the love, his he's, um, performances jump up even more. So it's all about getting behind him, all about supporting him, encouraging him on. Like we saw with the display and the Gallagher recently with War Flags, absolutely tremendous. And, um, yeah, St. Maximum will get back to his vintage best, no doubt about it. And the more and more we uh, improve with better players, the likes of Bruno Gimerez, uh, and you know, etc. Again, the Saints' performances are going to go up and up and up, and he's going to look more and more and more uh, like that an absolute fucking wall beater. You know, so I think we have to remind ourselves we're looking to have these sorts of players. It wasn't too long ago uh, that we had the Obertans of the world. So fuck me. Um, the attitudes of the world so we're talking about stepping up we're talking about levels St Maximum for me definitely is levels above what we've had uh, previously um, Eddie Howe in the press conference yesterday also spoke on the uh, injury front Callum Wilson back on the training pitch great to see Kieran Trippier also back not full time but on the training pitch joining in They've released Instagram videos of goals and training sessions and everything else recently. So they were, they were hinting at it, they were teasing. Absolute fucking teasers, them do, uh, on social media. Um, and uh, yeah, Eddie Howe confirmed that they trained, they trained well this week and he's talked about the fact that it's been a massive, massive plus point for everybody else to see those lads back on the, uh, the training pitches um, at Newcastle. So will they start? Nah, they're not going to start either, let's face it, after the time that they've had out. But could they be on the bench? I mean, there's every possibility that they could be on the bench. Um, and then we just see, it, see how it goes, because I don't think Eddie Howe's going to be taking too much of a risk with these lads, because it's all about getting ready for next season um, for, for them, because they are two players almost certain, like 99.99999% certain is going to be involved uh, you know, very heavily next um, you know next season. So fantastic to see those uh, photos released by the club. Fantastic to see uh, Eddie House speaking about these lads being back and available. Uh, and that leaves really the only player who's definitely, definitely out um, because obviously Cher's going to get a, a late fitness test. I'm pretty sure that he's going to miss out on the cells. It's going to start, but definitely out. Ryan Fraser. Uh, again, he's on the pitches, he's doing work, he's training, but it's a hamstring one. They don't want to take a risk with him. Um, again, we're looking towards next season, and again, he's he pretty much cemented his place, hasn't he? So, again, he's got the opportunity to impress Eddie Howe out on the training pitches. 
on top of the fantastic work that he's done, uh, you know, recently in the team, he'll be absolutely fine. But Eddie Howe again ruling out the, the Scottish international. Well, <laughs> when he's picked, that is uh, the Scottish international Ryan Fraser. But uh, yeah, cracking, cracking player. Newcastle still getting linked with players left, right, and centre. Obviously, Eddie Howe didn't really want to talk about any of that at this point, but clearly meetings are happening, scouting taking place. There were scouts at the West Ham um, game in Europe what, uh, against what was it, Frankfurt, wasn't it? Um, Newcastle scouting players left, right, and centre, trying to get as much in depth knowledge as is humanly possible um, on options and stuff going forward for the summer. Like I say, we, we, I think we'll be looking at um, defence, midfield, attack, goalkeeper. I'm not so uh, sure about. There's still strong rumours about the likes of Henderson coming in, but I just don't know whether at this stage of the game do we really need another goalkeeper. I know some people around us um, when we're at the matches uh, grumble about Dubravka's uh, distribution and stuff, but he's shot stopping um, and he's cult like status at the club. I don't know. I just don't know if there's other areas that you would prioritise, in particular an extra striker. Um, you know, the left back situation needs to be sorted out. There, there is areas of, of the uh, club that need to be sorted out. Um, so, it's all about priorities, isn't it? it? It's not football manager, it's all about realities, it's all about uh, still doing things within the financial fair play structure and, and spirit and everything else like that. So. I don't know, i just be trying to keep my money back for the key areas, for the for the, for the the bigger signings that is going to have the maximum impact because again we, we have to get rid of, I think we're, we've got about 30 players at the moment, you can only have 25 in the squad so we've already got to get rid of uh, 5 before we even start getting rid of players to free up slots in the actual uh, squad itself so big, big, big changes at Newcastle over the summer but I think it's quality uh, over quantity and it's evolution rather than revol uh, revolution and I think the likes, the signing, the signing of Paul Dummett is all part of that, it is a common sense decision to me to bring in somebody with, with the money that he'll be on, no transfer fee involved, um, he knows about the area, understands about the fans, the club and everything else like that, he's got the connection, so again, com common sense. And it's been a long time since Newcastle United, about 14 fucking years coincidentally, have <laughs> made common sense decisions because under Ashley and that fucking absolute bastard, use wet wipe Lee Charney, we'd make anything but common sense decisions. So it's nice, it's refreshing to see that happening. And the last thing as well to touch on is the plans that come out yesterday for the trainer ground to be improved uh, new paddling pools splash pools hydrotherapy all this sort of thing state of the art stuff going into the existing training ground a facelift to the existing training ground an extension to the current existing training ground in preparation uh, you know then for in future years in future years we will be getting a brand new training thing but look that's going to take a couple of years to sort out a site plan and permission and all that so before we can even start building a new complex so in the interim time they're making changes to the current training uh, ground to really maximize everything we're able to get out of the current squad and really right the wrongs of 14 years of neglect from Mike Ashley who always maintained that the training ground was perfectly adequate it was up to standard and stuff well these uh, new owners have come in and said look it's dog shite it's basically a heap of shite and we need to, to bring it up to standard they've gone around the manchester city's uh, training ground they've gone around uh, the likes of chelsea's training ground they've come back to ours and fuck me it looks like a right dog's dinner so the look you've got to credit them even though it's 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 spending money that ultimately might be flushed down the toilet it's all about um improving performance it's all about the here and now and it's all about maximizing things in the short term and not just looking to the medium to long term so again it's it's fantastic to see and it's not a case of penny pinching it's a case of putting in there what every other premier league club has got 
so we can attract the players in so that we can look after and it, again we talk about injuries we talk, we talk about the likes of Paul Dummett and stuff like that but with the correct equipment and the correct recovery stuff who knows what an effect on some of the players who do often pick up injuries your Callum Wilsons of the world that that is going to have so again yes you're putting a few million pound in now to something that might be defunct in three or four years time but if that stops uh, you know as many injuries as what we historically always seem to get then it's worth the investment with each place in the premier league being worth what 2.5 million pound in merit money alone it pays for itself it pays for itself if we can keep the, the, the team as fit as possible and as injury free as possible um it, it does it pays for itself it looks really good uh it looks a lot more fresh extra uh, offices in there uh, a players meeting room all the latest mod cons so it's fantastic and again another thing that the owners promised they are you know delivering on and we knew the new training ground wasn't being an overnight thing and i think back in february the um it was I think it was Stavely who uh, was speaking about it and she said look it is going to take at least three years at least three years to get the site sorted and the plans done and the plans passed and through before we can then start uh, you know making what is the end goal you know a, a fantastic state of the art place for the, the first team to come the women's team to come the, the youth squads have everybody under one roof not where we've got it at the moment which uh, it was a hush posh from when, when we first moved in there it was awful it wasn't probably the ideal place and the right place to do it in, in, in the first the first instance and we've had to mend and make do with what was already there but uh, I remember the days when they were training back in Durham yes many of a day in, in the youth watching uh, the training uh, up Durham so look um, where we're heading it was absolutely fantastic no doubt about it an exciting summer ahead but we have got these few games left remaining in the meantime I'm still positive I think we're going to get potentially a draw out of this game <coughs> against Manchester City I think we're capable of getting a point out of it so fingers crossed that goes to plan then the last game of the season at home against Arsenal and then the last game of the season Newcastle not directly in the relegation dog shit but again we could like with the title situation we could certainly play a part in the relegation um, scene on the final day we could be part of that drama uh, depending upon the result that we get or we are getting against uh, Burnley at Turf Moor uh, could mean that there's ramifications for an Everton or a Leeds so fun times ahead no doubt about it uh, you know <laughs> looking forward to that as well looking forward to the last home game of the season as well to send the players off because the turnaround they deserve an absolute heroes um, you know show of love from, from the fans Eddie Howe as well he will get a lot of love from um, you know all the Newcastle fans come on in you've got to remember when these lads come in at Christmas time, we looked fuck. We looked like we were up shit creek without a bastard paddle. Thanks to the fucking piss flaps who were in charge uh, previously and fucking Steve Bruce and the likes. The turnaround to be one of the form um, teams in the league in 2022 is unbelievable with what he has. And it's just exciting to think, what can he do with another transfer window and a few more quality players, a few more Bruno Gomerezes through the door? It, 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 but it fucking boggles your mind when you've seen some of the shit I mean fuck me I've been there for games like when we've lost against uh, Bournemouth um, in McLaren's uh, end of the McLaren days I've seen Susanessa's oh, I've seen some right fucking dog shit sexy football fuck me sexy football that was as fucking turn off as you want that's not wasn't a sexy football should be done under the Bastard Trades Description Act. I've seen some shit performances, some shit players <laughs> over the many, many years. Uh, it, but it's just so exciting now. The future, you can't wait to get to the summer. You can't wait for next season to start already. Fucking hell. World Cup in the middle of it will be a bit of a uh, slap around the face. But 
it is what it is, isn't it? At the end of the day, can't do much about that. But yeah, exciting times ahead. Let me know what you think down below. Uh, will Eddie Howe change the formation? There's a couple of rumblings I've heard possibility about that. It might go to five at the back. I don't know. Will he change the formation? Who's going to start? Will the cells come in for Fabian Cher? Because I can't imagine Cher being risked, to be honest. Uh, any other changes that you'd make? Would you put Joe Linton back in the middle? Would you prefer him out more towards the left-hand side, cutting in like he did so well against Norwich? Um, who starts up top? Does Chris Wood come in after a couple of games that he's been uh, rested? He wasn't the right option for, for those particular games. Does he come back in with a little bit of being under his bonnet with a point to prove? I don't know. It could be the sort of game to bring him in, uh, most definitely. Um, yeah, let me know what you think below for who's going to be starting. The score as well. Is there anybody out there who's, who's confidently predicting a Newcastle United victory down at the Etihad? Let me know. Uh, how you think we are going to do where we can win where we can hurt Manchester City as well and what Manchester City you think we will be coming up against will they be the wounded Manchester City or will they be coming out swinging with an absolute point to prove with an axe to grind and with a determination to try and uh, take the title away from Liverpool and keep it in Manchester so let me know down below and in the meantime take care keep it tuned and I'll speak to you later. Thank <laughs> you.